I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. What is a voice? What is a voice? And that's something that we use to convey an idea, a word, a message. So there might be something that I want to say to you, and I have to think of that, and then will to say that. Now, a lot of it happens subconsciously as we push air out of our lungs over our vocal cords and they stretch to make different tones and we use our teeth and our tongue and our lips to make the actual sounds, to make the sound waves that travel through the air and hit the ears of the hearer. And then that's processed by their brains. And so if we're speaking the same language, the word that I'm trying to say to you might actually make it to you. And now the word that I have in me would hopefully be in you. And we use our voice to do that. And usually what happens is by the time the voice hits your ears, you processed it, now you understand it, those sound waves are already gone. The voice, the act of me actually saying the word has already passed. And now you have it within you. We know this from experience. We can even think about how the voice goes so quickly. Someone say, says something and it's gone, but it might stick with us for a long time, right? They might be words that hurt us. They might be words that encourage us. We can probably think of some of those great moments in our lives when someone said to us, I love you. Will you marry me? We're having a baby. I forgive you. Whatever some of those great moments in your life, you can probably hear them already, just thinking about them, even though those waves are gone. Even our loved ones who are long gone, they've deceased, we can hear their voice. We can hear the things that they said to us, even though those sound waves have passed. Now, John the Baptist is that voice crying out in the desert. He speaks with an authority. As a prophet, he has the Holy Spirit upon him. He's speaking God's truth. Yes, he's wearing camel hair, and he eats locusts and wild honey. He's kind of a little radical, a little ascetical, a little weird, a little out there, but people are still drawn to him, attracted to him by the way that he lives and the things that he says. This message of repentance that he's preaching, that he's preaching in the desert. So many people flock to him to hear him and his words, his voice conveys a message, God's message to them. And many, many people were impacted very deeply that they repented and that they underwent the baptism of John. You know, that's different than this current sacrament of baptism we have now, which actually removes our sins, which actually makes us sons and daughters of God. So this baptism, though, of repentance was preparing the way. It was very much in line with Jewish tradition of, like, ritual washing, and when they come home from the marketplace or if they had touched something unclean, they would go through a ritual washing to purify themselves, to make themselves holy, to turn away from whatever was bad, to turn away from their sin and back to God. So this is the baptism of repentance that John was preaching. And many people receive that. Now even, it's become, he becomes so well known that the Jews, the leaders in Jerusalem are wondering, what is up with this guy? What is this guy doing? Is he the Christ? People start to wonder that. He sounds like the Christ. He's acting like he might be. He's baptizing. Is he? So we'll send, they send men to go question him. Some priests, some Levites, even some Pharisees go out to the desert to speak to John. And they ask him, are you the Christ? And he says, no. Are you Elijah? No. Are you the prophet? No. Well, then who are you? Who are you? And he says, I am the voice. I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. The voice. John is the voice. The word is Jesus. That eternal word that existed before all time, that existed before John, that is the message he is conveying to the people at the Jordan. This message of Jesus who is coming. And he speaks those words. He's the voice. And people receive that. Receive that message of repentance. Their heart is prepared. We hear of many of, the, of, of John's disciples become Jesus' disciples because of that. 
So even when John's voice fades away, is no longer echoing in their ears, they still have that word, that is Jesus. They still have that word, that is Jesus. Now right after this gospel passage from tonight, if you keep going in John chapter 1, the next thing, the next verse, it says, On the next day John saw Jesus and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Sounds familiar, right? We hear that every Mass. After the consecration, after the sign of peace, the priest will take the, the chalice full of Jesus' precious blood. Take the consecrated host. Jesus' true body, true blood. Body, blood, soul, and divinity. And as he raises them up for the whole congregation to see, he says those words of John the Baptist. Behold the Lamb of God. It's such a privilege for me as a deacon because I can be so close to the altar and really see and experience truly the love that our priests have for the Eucharist and have for you. Their faith, their conviction, their true humility as they say, like John the Baptist, there he is. This is Jesus. They are the voice speaking to us now. The voice saying, here is the word the Word made flesh who comes to dwell among us. And He wants to come to you in the Eucharist. He's here to come to you in the Eucharist tonight. Those words that are said by the priest that then echo in your ears, and then you're prepared to receive that Word, that Word that is Jesus. And so John the Baptist again is saying, I am the voice, I am the voice. His quote comes from Isaiah, and we heard that earlier in Advent. Where Isaiah is saying, Mate straight the way of the Lord, you know, fill in all the valleys, all the mountains will be made low, so there's a path for the, for the Lord to come. Okay, so this isn't just an internal, an internal preparation. That's part of it. That's part of it. But it's not just about going to a dark, quiet place with maybe a few candles lit to pray that God will heal your heart. That's part of it. But it's also sharing with those around you sharing with those around you. We're called to make this known to those in our life. So our family, our friends, and our neighbors, we're called in the same way that John the Baptist was the voice proclaiming the Lord. Brothers and sisters, that's what you're called to do. You've been baptized as priest, prophet, and king, and you're called to share that message. You're called to help prepare the way of the Lord, especially now this last week of Advent. There's so many things that are going on, we're so busy, we're starting to have Christmas parties, and how many cards can we get out, and how many things can we wrap? How can we make that part of our life? How can we make that preparation to receive the word still part of our activity? How can we show that to others? How can you show the way that God is working in your life? Pointing out, say, here is the Lamb of God. The one who takes away the sins of the world, this is what he's done for me. This is how he's loved me. This is how he's healed me. This is how he's forgiven me. How he's poured out his mercy. This is what he's doing in my prayers. This is what he's doing in my life. And this is what he can do for you. That's what we're called to do. We're called to share that. Going back to the Mass, when, when Father says, Behold the Lamb of God, our response is, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We say that so many times, but stop and think about that for a minute. We're recognizing that we are not worthy, but we're asking God to prepare us, to prepare our hearts to receive him. Receive him in this Eucharist, receive him this Advent at Christmas, and when he comes again. We're asking him to do that to help us. And then after we receive communion, we're sent out. At the end of Mass, at the dismissal, we're sent out to now go and proclaim that to all people. Because you are called to be that voice as well. The same way that John the Baptist was that voice announcing the coming of the Lord, that is what you're called to do. To share it with all those around you. To be the voice. The voice who shares the word and gives it to the, those who hear it. I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the path of the Lord.